to, to our guest. Um, I would just like to introduce Alexandre Almeida. He, he, is, he is representing uh, Globash here. He, uh, Globash is a partner of the Dandelion Project and uh, Net for Society worked with Dandelion Project to prepare this webinar. And today Alexandre will be uh, taking the, the, the mission from Lisbon. So with fur without further delay, I would like to uh, welcome Alexandre and invite him to start his okay. presentation. Okay, thank you. Good afternoon to, to all of you. Uh, and first, of course, I would like to thank uh, Net for Society Project for inviting uh, the Dandelion Project uh, um, for this uh, webinar. Uh, this is our work uh, on the project and we are very glad to be, to be here. Um, the objective for this uh, for this webinar, I mean, at the end of uh, of the projects of this webinar, we want uh, that the participant has a, um, an idea and, and a clear idea how uh, communication and dissemination activities can be implemented, not only during the project. The main target of this webinar are, are projects, uh, ongoing projects, but of course also on the preparation. And in this case, we are talking about uh, 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 proposals. Um, we will, this is a limited in time webinar, but we will try to present some, uh, some examples of uh, some insights how the things can be done in order to, to, to allow the, the, the participants to understand in practice how, how the things can be, can be done. Uh, and also just to, 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 to say that uh, this webinar is based in two guides that the Dandelion project is, uh, is creating. One is the good practice for dissemination managers and the other one is uh, a guide uh, to, to um, help the projects to communicate to their, to their target uh, groups. The, the, um, this webinar is, we can say that is specific for uh, SSH projects, uh, inclusive, innovating and, and reflective society projects, but of course, uh, in general, this can also be uh, um, uh, put in practice by, by, other, by other projects. So, in terms of just a quick uh, introduction of, of uh, Dandelion, Dandelion is, uh, is a or Dandelion, <laughs> as you prefer. It's a, it's a Horizon 2020 um, project. Uh, it started in April uh, 2016. Uh, and why, why Dandelion exists? So we, we replied to a challenge from the European Commission um, that uh, wants to give more um, uh, visibility to the projects that are uh, that were and are financed by by FP7 and Horizon 2020. We are talking about of uh, about uh, 400 projects um, during these years, with 3,000 organizations involved, uh, and the objective of of Dandelion is to to collect knowledge produced by these uh, by these projects and then promote them. Uh, uh, create some uh, dissemination and communication actions that will help some stakeholders, mainly, for instance, the citizens, to understand what is being d uh, done on, on um, uh, SSH uh, projects. Um, we will give also uh, direct support so to some projects that we will select, or some of them already ask for our, for our help. Uh, and this help will be in terms of, for instance, to help them to uh, create and promote uh, the project on social networks or to create some uh, dissemination materials like a brochure or, or even redefine a logo or, as we like to call it, a brand because we see the projects as a brand that must be uh, promoted. Um, this is the, you can see on this slide, the, the consortium. We are uh, seven partners, most of them communication agencies. So we are used to communicate not only uh, projects, but uh, products and services in, in general. And of course, we have in this case, the GOAT University from Frank Frankfurt, that is our expert in SS SSH team. Uh, the agenda for today, uh, uh, very fast. Uh, um, we want to, to, to explain how our communication uh, 
plan can be can be set up uh, what channels and tools uh, we can use um, also some some words about the branding and dissemination again here the 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 word branding because it's a brand our our project and now and then also how to communicate with specific target groups general public policy makers academia and uh, and media uh, and at the end some uh, words about uh, monitoring and evaluation of the dissemination and communication uh, plan so first of all you need to to set up your communication goals and make the things happen and for this you always need to have in mind these two concepts the smart and the, and the kiss here the kiss with a with a little update from the original but in this case keep it uh, simple and seriously um, during this presentation you you always need to be in line with these two concepts so um, the, the the activities the objectives the the indicators must be smart and everything that we do everything that uh, you disseminate and communicate needs to be needs to follow the kiss uh, con concept keep it simple especially in the social science and humanities where uh, the main target group are, are citizens and also policy makers that what they want to, to have is a simple thing to understand the impact how the, the, the research can be applied in their daily uh, lives um, so when defining the communication goals you need to have uh, in uh, in consideration uh, some some uh, consideration some uh, points these are not uh, um, these these points that i will uh, uh, talk about now they will they will they will not follow uh, the specific order they can have another order or even uh, do do then in in uh, in parallel uh, so first you need to understand very well the objectives of your project and the expected impact if you don't know this you will not know how to communicate how, how to to um, to disseminate so ask ask yourself um, what you want to communicate and and uh, and how uh, second point is uh, be in line with the stages of a project in a general way uh, we can divide a project in three stages we have the design the research and the implementation in, and testing uh, for these three stages you have different uh, goals of uh, dissemination and communication uh, during the first month during the design stage you probably you will need more uh, some uh, some uh, workshops to to raise awareness of your project uh, and also to collect some feedback from experts or other stakeholders and you also need to define very well um, your communication strategy what you want to communicate and and uh, and how during the search the second stage the research uh, if we talk about uh, two years or three years project we are talking about a one year or one and a half year so at the middle of the project um, that you already have some results um, then you you need to start uh, uh, working on that to present this uh, these results to to organize events when you, where you can disseminate uh, uh, the these results and uh, and um, again this continue to raise awareness uh, on the, on the project at the, at the third stage you have the the implementation and testing so you you are almost at the end of uh, of the project so you the focus the main focus will be on the on the results and in this case depending of on the type of projects if you if you have a, a um, area you may think on the, on the sustainability and further research if you are participating in an innovation project so you need to think in terms of of market of exploitation how try to convince even to convince investors to 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 invest in your in your project so these three stages uh, uh, you need to clarify very well at the beginning of of, of the project when you when each of these stages will will happen then um, as you know all the the, um, the projects they have the work packages so you need to 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 assess and to um, divide very well 
what we want to communicate for each of the of the work packages. Um, this is a good way that divide to conquer, right? So if you know very well uh, what you, what is uh, s um, supposed to communicate to disseminate in each work package, you can do an integrated approach uh, on this that uh, will be better to the to the final uh, objectives of the project as a whole. Uh, then. As I said before, this is not uh, 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 by a specific order, so probably target groups are, could be even the first thing to, to, to think about, but think, think very well uh, about the target groups that you want to, 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 uh, to reach, uh, because um, you need to know them, you, we need, you, you need to know what are their expectations, how, which channels and tools you should use for each of them. Um, we will see later on on this presentation some uh, specific uh, um, rules that we should follow to target uh, different uh, uh, target groups. Then, don't forget uh, what is feasible, because uh, we are talking about a financed project with a but the predefined budget with a time span also predefined so don't try to to <laughs> to build a very extensive and, and uh, uh, dissemination campaign because then you you could not have the enough time to to implement it or enough uh, uh, enough money to to do it uh, at last at least at last the the Try, and this is uh, like one of the things that uh, it's very important on, on this uh, societal challenge, that is try to transform your research results in, in the action, what we call actionable knowledge. This means that uh, uh, it's very important to have uh, a scientific article, a paper, but citizens, uh, policymakers, uh, uh, media, for instance, what they want to know its concrete information. Storytelling approach, for instance, or, or creating some stories around your research, it's, it will be the best way to, to communicate it. Of course, if you want to communicate to other researchers, then you will use the papers and the uh, scientific uh, approach. So, um, for, for, um, for the dis dis dissemination uh, action plan, uh, you need to define uh, the tasks and and the, and the components. So what what needs to be to be first? Uh, we used to say like uh, to create uh, a Gantt chart only for the dissemination work pack package is uh, is a good way to to work, even during the proposal stage. Uh, for instance, if we think on on Dandelion, on the proposal stage we already presented again chart for the first year of the project with the dissemination activities that we want to implement. Of course, it's a plan, it could change, but we, we made this. So, um, define very well the, the tasks and the, 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 the dependencies between, between the, the tasks. Um, also, add the chronological order, of course. If we are talking about a Gantt chart, it should, it should have this chronological um, approach. Um, very important is to, to do not to have tasks without a father or a mother. So each task must have a, a, a responsibility. I'm not only talking about the tasks that you have in the work packages, but then there are other, other tasks like uh, contributing to the social networks, contributing to the blog. Uh, you should create, a, 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 let's say, a, a, a timesheet uh, where you request uh, inputs from, from the partners without the participation of, of course, all projects have a um, dissemination leader, dissemination manager, but without the, the contribution from the entire consortium, it will be very difficult to, to reach the, the a big impact with, uh, with uh, the project in terms of dissemination and, and communication. And then, of course, we all know this from the proposals. Um, sometimes we just put in the proposals <laughs> some, uh, some uh, risks and barriers that we already know, but it's very important to, to, to define these uh, barriers and risks and to have at least a plan for cont contingency uh, because th things happen <laughs> and, uh, and it's very important to be, to be prepared. 
the following slides uh, are just some uh, examples of uh, of uh, tables that can be used to help to visualize these things that I, I said. Um, if you don't see it clear, but and also these are just examples. This presentation will be available, and you can you can uh, check it. In this case, we have an example for how to visualize the actions that we want to implement. So we start by defining the target group. If they are a primary or secondary tar target group, what is the communication objective, and what which which action can we uh, develop, and then. Uh, we, we also define the level of involvement that we want to have from the target group uh, and how to engage this, this target group. This is a simple table that helps us to visualize what we need to, to do. Uh, another table, it's, this is uh, very common, that is the, the, the distribution of, uh, of tasks. So which task, what task, uh, the prior priority level, it is very important or not so, not so important. Who is the responsible? What resources are needed? The deadline and what is the expected uh, outcome? As I said before, these tables can be used not not only during the project but even before the project. And the uh, European Commission is requesting from the proposals to have a, a draft or a, let's call it a mini dissemination plan. So these tables are are good to to present on the, on this dissemination plan. And the table of risks, uh, don't, uh, don't uh, conf confuse this with the uh, risks from the implementation part of the project. These are risks associated to the, to the dissemination. For instance, you want to organize a workshop, there is a risk of low participation or even too much participation in some cases. So you need to, to think on this and have a contingency plan to, to, to fix this, uh, this pr these problems if they appear. So another uh, subject is uh, uh, select the channels, uh, the communication channels and the tools uh, to, to spread our, our, our word, our, our project. We have the interpersonal channels that are in a broad definition, the events. And for the events, we have, let's put it, the four here. Um, depending on the stage of the project, depending on the, um, on the objectives, uh, there are a lot of events that we can organize or participate. Uh, for instance, awareness events. Um, we are talking about an uh, off-day um, event. And in terms of uh, European uh, projects, uh, we are talking about uh, workshops that are good to foster uh, discussions, to collect feedback, to validate uh, methodologies, to, so to involve, to involve stakeholders in, the, in, our, uh, in our project. Um, this can be done at the beginning of the project or some milestones where we need the feedback from, from, uh, some, from the experts, stakeholders, uh, participants in, uh, in general. Uh, then uh, we have the, the, the workshops, uh, interactive actions uh, uh, with, the, with the participants. We all are used to, to organize and to participate in, uh, in workshops. The seminars, so the seminar, um, it's a more academic, uh, with a more academic approach. Uh, it's good to, to involve other projects, other researchers, um, that they are interested in the results of our project. Um, so they are more technical and scientific uh, events. Um, then we have the conferences. Um, most of the times in the European projects, um, what we do is uh, participate in conference from, uh, from all other organizers or even uh, collect, um, join uh, X number of projects and, and organize a, a, a conference between all of these projects. And normally also is associated a call, call for papers, uh, ask for, for, for participants. Uh, some more interpersonal channels. We have, uh, sorry, you ha we have parallel sessions, exhibition area and trade, and trade fair. These last two are more 
useful where, when you are already at the final stage of the project because you want to demonstrate, you want to show your project, your results. Even the trade fair, it's something more uh, uh, commercial. Um, and of course, the parallel sessions, um, it's when in a conference or in an event, we can have uh, our project in a parallel session discussing uh, um, uh, or discussing um, subjects that are in line with the main uh, main uh, conference. Going to the community-oriented channels, these are, in other words, we are talking about uh, uh, social networks. That's why this uh, picture here. And we start with this sentence because um, technically, it's not I difficult to have uh, social networks. Uh, I, I mean, every anyone can do can do that. The problem is the animation of, of the of the social networks to create contents to 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 create interest in the others to engage uh, the, the visitors in uh, in what uh, we are uh, publishing. So we talk about Facebook, uh, LinkedIn, Instagram. Um, for the moment, uh, uh, we in uh, in the guides that we are creating. We decided to leave um, YouTube outside this uh, equation because most of the projects, okay, you you produce a video or two videos, but this you, do, you don't have to you don't need to have a channel for one or two videos. You you publish this, you do all the advertisement needed for that, but you don't need to have a, a, a channel. And of course, you can also publish the video on Twitter and Instagram. So YouTube maybe is not so 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 important. Um, the main message to, to, to retain here is the animation. Uh, we don't want to publish an article in, uh, in, um, in, f in uh, to make a post in, in Facebook, for instance, and then it, it will stay there for one month without any uh, feedback or without any uh, uh, update. We need to have a, um, to define an approach we are talking about projects in consortium, so I can do a, a post and then some partners can, can uh, go there and animate. All of we, we have our own networks, all organizations, uh, public uh, or, or not, we have social networks that we can use in favor of, of our uh, projects. Um, the next slides, we are just, it's just for your uh, reference, we are we, uh, we want just to give you this information in how Facebook, Twitter, um, Instagram and, and um, LinkedIn can be used in the scope of the European projects. We all know these social networks, we all know that Facebook is more for, for, uh, for people, to engage people, to, to, to present uh, uh, some uh, outputs in a, in a common language uh, uh, approach and to create uh, a network, to create uh, contacts, to create buzz around uh, our project. The Twitter, it's also very important for this, but we are using a lot and we are uh, advising your, our projects to, to use Twitter to promote uh, events. If, we, for instance, you have a consortium of 10 partners, two of them are participating in an event, uh, why not take your own conclusions on, on the moment and send to, uh, and put it on Twitter? So saying like, Mr. X said something very important about uh, migration and you can had your personal uh, uh, opinion and do a, a tweet. Uh, then LinkedIn, as you know, it's more, uh, more uh, a professional uh, network. We always advise to create uh, um, a group. The problem now with LinkedIn is that um, if you do a post in the, in the, um, in the group, it's not possible to share. To share. So if, if you, you really want to, to, to go outside your group and to go to more groups, the best way is to publish an article at your own personal account, uh, and then this article can be uh, shared um, on LinkedIn and even in other social uh, uh, networks. Um, and then use, uh, use uh, also the, the Instagram for if you have a uh, before I said that you need to create some uh, um, uh, um, not, uh, some information that can be 
easily understand by, by, by the citizens. So if you create some infographics, some uh, stories, some uh, uh, images, you can put it on, on, uh, on Instagram. Also, short videos, if you are at an event and you want to, to take some conclusions of that event, you can also publish here. Don't forget that for all these social networks, you can use uh, uh, software to manage uh, all in one. So instead of being uh, going from site to site, you can use this kind of uh, software. Some of them, it's even uh, free. Uh, some, or you can use the free versions that for, for the scope of the projects, it's, it's enough. And it's also very good to schedule the, 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 um, the posts. Instead of being there today and the day after tomorrow and at the beginning of next week, you just schedule your posts, tweet, Facebook, whatever, and the software do does it uh, um, automatically. So going now to the, to the media channels, and the easiest one, <laughs> the website and, and, the, and the blog. So all projects must have a, a website nowadays having a good looking website it's more or less easy uh, the 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 worst part or the difficult part is, is to keep the website alive so again as the uh, as uh, the example of the social networks you need to have a, a, a very good methodology to to keep this site in in movement so try to have a website with with a back office where you can easily uh, create news, events, uh, articles, but I don't want to go to a website and after one month I will go there again and it's the same thing. Probably I will not go there for the third time. So also it's very important to, to, to have uh, uh, the performance of the website in terms of statistics. We are recommending here Google Analytics, but of course there are other um, services that can be used. This is very important, not just for knowing, ah, we had uh, 1,000 visits this month. No, we need to know other things. Uh, we need to know how many pages the visit visitors saw, uh, which, which pages, uh, from where these visitors are coming, how many time they spend in our website. So this will help us to understand how the site is reaching the, the, the visitors and to create different uh, um, uh, approaches. Uh, we will speak a little bit later on this, but uh, one thing that we want to avoid is the so-called bounce rate. This means that uh, a visitor goes to your website and he only visits the, the first page and go, go away. This could mean two things, is that you have a very good first page and everything is there, but most of the cases, um, the reason is that you, you didn't uh, convince the visitor to, to visit uh, the, the other pages. So bounce rate is a, uh, something that we should have access uh, if we use uh, uh, Google Analytics or other, other service. The blog. The blog is something important. Uh, mainly if we use, for instance, WordPress, because WordPress is very good um, it positioned in the, in the search engines. So try to do this experience, but sometimes if we s search for something from an European project, and sometimes you, you find first the blog and then the website, because uh, the, the WordPress, the, the, the search engine optimization, it's, it's very good. Again, the issue here on the blog is create contents, create useful contents uh, and contents that visitors will, will, will like to, to, to see. Uh, other media channels, we are talking about uh, the uh, radio, TV and, and uh, magazines, journals, and it could sound a little bit strange, but online advertisement and digital marketing. marketing. If we think in a project as a product, as a service that we want to, to promote. Um, it's important to use, okay, we are not talking about uh, thousands of euros for this, but uh, with uh, 200 euros, 300 euros in Facebook, you can create an interested uh, campaign if you target very well uh, the, the users. So thinking, think on using this, uh, this email marketing and search engine 
op optimization. Um, now, some fast words about branding and dissemination. Of course, all of you know that uh, we need to have a, a logo for our, our website, but sometimes we don't give the, the importance that is needed uh, to, to this uh, issue. Because a good log logo is uh, 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 the one of the best ways to attract, uh, to attract uh, the interest from the, from the um, visitors to the website, for instance, or to the readers of a brochure, of a poster. Uh, and the consistency between all the, the materials is also uh, very important. So, besides creating a logo and, uh, and uh, identity, uh, for instance, in terms of identity, you don't need to stick to the um, description of the project that you use for the proposal. Um, for if we think on Dandelion, for instance, we change the, the the name of the of the the short the long name of the project because we wanted to have a, a, a more appealing uh, uh, slogan. So you keep the the acronym and then you create a more let's say, marketing uh, um, um, sl slogan. Uh, and always think on the stationary. So don't uh, communicate. Uh, and also, the, it's very important if you uh, don't let, if you are the dissemination leader or, or the coordinator, don't let the partners do things uh, in, in dissemination and communication without asking you or without the consistency. Because then they will do it on their own way, and you will have a brochure that is uh, uh, black and white, and the other partner do in green, another in red, and at the end, you don't have uh, an identity uh, uh, of your project. So uh, concentrate everything on the dissemination uh, leader. Uh, and then, of course, the traditional here, it works. That is the, the leaflets, the brochures, the posters, roll-ups, um, videos. You should create uh, all this uh, for, for um, for your projects. Going now to the, um, if we, uh, as you remember at the beginning, I said that this uh, webinar is is um, based in two guidelines. We are now entering the second guideline that is um, knowing your target groups. Uh, and in this case, it was the objective of the project. We we um, we are working with uh, the general public, policymakers, academia, and and and, uh, and media. So what you need to know from each of these uh, of these uh, uh, stakeholders, the general public, uh, general public, it's me, it's Marisa, it's you. So before being uh, a researcher or a national contact point uh, or uh, me, <laughs> we are citizens. So we want to, to know uh, the impact uh, of uh, of the research in our daily lives to us, to our family, to our friends. Um, so what we call here research to society implies winning the attention, the attention of the public at large. Uh, without using uh, scientific uh, terms, without using very, uh, as we say, expensive uh, words, uh, we need to communicate in a common uh, language. It's not always easy, but this should be the, the objective. In the scope of our project, we ha we will, um, and if uh, your project or wants to want to work with us, we made a, um, we create two subgroups in uh, in general public. We have all ages as a whole, and then we have young people. Um, this was um, decided because this because we think that young people they have a different uh, approach to the to the. Um, to this, to uh, social science, sciences and humanities, because they ha want to have uh, fast uh, um, um, feedback, fast uh, uh, impact, and um, and also maybe in sometimes they even have more knowledge than the, than the the, the older uh, people. Policy makers, um, what we call res research to policy, um, implies est establishing a clear and define uh, impacts. Um, policy makers, they want to know um, 
they want to understand the, the triangle between science, innovation and quality of life. They want to, to, to have the, the political dimension and the impact resulting from, from our research. Um, so the key message when communicating to, to policymakers should include uh, how our research can contribute uh, to, to, to their um, political implementation. And this, um, for this uh, stakeholder, we created um, three levels, the policymakers at European level, policymakers at national level, and policymakers at local level, because of, of course they have different uh, uh, objectives. Academia, probably the easiest uh, target group for, for you, because you are uh, communicating to your peers. So what implies here is to offering uh, ro robust uh, knowledge. Um, they want to know um, the re they want to know about the results of your project and what um, progress can be done on that knowledge. What they can use and they can improve, or they can work together with uh, with you for creating uh, some curricula or training or for capacity building in uh, in general. Uh, for these stakeholders, we create we divided in universities in general and also research uh, institutes. Uh, the media. And we have uh, eight minutes. <laughs> the media. Um, if you, by the way, if you think on the, that uh, um, quadruple helix approach, we should have n not media here, but uh, business. But uh, in the scope of our project, we decided to to target uh, the media. That it's somehow it's included in the in the business. But uh, well, when communicating to 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 media, this implies. Um, uh, providing information that can be turned in stories. So the media wants to present to, to their uh, readers um, uh, stories, uh, uh, not uh, the project itself. No, we don't want to say that this is a Horizon 2020 project. It started uh, from here to there with, with this budget, with 10 partners, describing all the partners. No, they want to know, uh, they want to have a story uh, research and of course you don't uh, you cannot forget that depending on the media because we have media on for scientific areas or uh, political social uh, well-being whatever so you need to think on this uh, on the target uh, of our target in this case because they are multipliers of, of our project and here we are talking about uh, news agencies uh, print uh, press TV and radio, and also uh, bloggers. Bloggers are now very important because they are influencers of, of, uh, of others. So some words, and this will be faster, some words about uh, monitoring our action plan. So we created uh, uh, um, um, dissemination, dissemination and communication plan. We need to monitor this, this plan. We need to see if everything is going according with the plan that most of the times it's no <laughs> because uh, uh, things change there are a new there is a new event uh, or something change uh, um, in the in the in the context of the project so we need to think that a plan is a plan and probably we will need to make some uh, some adjustments but for that we need to uh, monitor the, what we are doing in terms of dissemination and, and, uh, and communication. These are uh, some uh, uh, issues that should be cons consider considered in this monitoring plan. Uh, don't, don't be afraid of, uh, of changes, they, they happen. Uh, for instance, we normally in, uh, in, uh, in uh, our projects, what we do is uh, we have a dissemination and communication plan at the uh, beginning of the project, month one or two. And then, at the middle of the project, we do uh, we 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 do this monitoring during the the 12 months, and then at the month 13, we do a new communication and dissemination plan where we evaluate what was done, and we can prepare new actions for the things that didn't uh, went as expected. Uh, the, the indicators on this uh, on this monitoring plan. 
um, you should always think in the valid information uh, and, and reliable. So, for instance, going back maybe to the easiest exam example, that is the website. Um, you, if we, you use Google Analytics, of course, you have here a valid and reliable information that you can use to, to, to understand how, this, how the access to your site uh, was going. Some okay, and uh, think also that this uh, these uh, indicators must be specific. They must measure a, a specific task or activity. Uh, that they are sensitive. This means that uh, 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 they can change uh, during during the the projects, uh, and that they are operational. This part of the op operational. I'm going back to the bounce rate, for instance. Um, there are uh, standards uh, that, uh, um, for instance, above 70% of uh, bounce rate. So when, when visitors are going to the website and 70% uh, of them don't see, uh, only see the home page, this is bad. So try to, to have your indicators in a way that you can uh, compare with the, with the um, with the standards. Then, the, the, um, how, how do you know that this campaign uh, uh, needs uh, uh, adjustment, adjustment? This is all, all in the, this plan, do, check, and act. This is a cycle. You are always planning, you are implementing things, but of course you need to check if the things are going uh, okay, if you reach the expected number of visitors to your website, if you organize an event and uh, you expected to have uh, 50 participants and you only had 10. So check all the, all the, 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 um, the information that you need and act, do, uh, do um, some changes on the, on the, on the plan and go back and go back and during the, the, the entire uh, project. This table is just for your information that since you, have, you will have the, the, um, all the, this, the slides after the presentation, we wanted to let leave you this, uh, this uh, table. This is almost uh, a resume of everything that was done, uh, that was said here, of course, some things are missing. It, in one slide, it, it was not possible. But what we have here is when we should do dissemination and communication, depending if you are in the project uh, preparation, if you are during the project or after the end of the project, what you need to do, uh, how and, and why. Uh, if you keep in mind this, uh, this, um, this table, uh, it will help you a lot in, in uh, in uh, implementing the dissemination and communication uh, activities. Of course, in the guide that will be available next month, you can see details on, on, uh, on this. Um, to finish, so in summary, the dissemination in the EU funded projects involves setting a sound strategy, promoting a consistent brand with a strong mission, supporting it with a useful and appealing set of tools, filling it <laughs> with relevant and valuable content, and using the right channels. And this last sentence is very important because we, at least as um, normally as dissemination leaders, we are used to that. <laughs> the involvement of the, the the involvement and fully commitment of the the partners is very it's very important. If the the entire consortium, it's uh, it's um, fully involved in the dissemination activities, um, the, the impact of the project will be higher. And that's it, right on time, 45 <laughs> minutes. <laughs> uh, thank you so much, Alshandr, and thank you for, for everyone who's uh, with us, uh, still with us. Uh, as some, of, some of you have already sent me emails and questions through the chat. Yes, the presentation will be made available uh, and also the video will be uploaded very soon to the Net for Society website. So in case you faced some technical um, challenges, uh, you will be able to catch, uh, catch up with the content uh, uh, later on. Uh, so right now we have plenty of time for any
any questions that you have, please remember uh, that um, you need to uh, uh, pose your questions through the chat. Uh, so in case you haven't insert, inserted your name there, please do so. I will do my best. There, we have a lot of people online, so if you all start uh, making questions, I'll do my best to, to, to gather uh, a bunch of questions and then pass the word to, to, to Alexandre for him to answer. Um, in the meantime, I, I would just like to stress some, some things that Alexandre mentioned. Uh, first of all, regarding the materials that the, the project will put out, uh, uh, these are very useful materials that you can use in every stage of the of the process. And uh, additionally, uh, they can also support you to the implementation phase. So in case you have any doubt, um, and if, if you're building a proposal or implementing uh, um, a project, please reach out uh, to Dandelion. Dandelion? <laughs> Missing the name here. Uh, and they can certainly help you. Uh, in what concerns the content of, of the webinar, and for me as a national contact point, I, I took some, some key ideas uh, that uh, came out from your presentation. First, it, it's the question of planning and what you need to, 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 to bear in mind, which is the type of action that we are in fact talking about in the project cycle. And this, this needs to be considered not only during implementation, but also when you're planning your proposal. Um, and the, the question that you mentioned about uh, uh, the need that we have to visualize what we want to do. And concerning not only uh, what we want to do in general terms, that we all know that we need to, to reach out to policy makers, but we need to visualize exactly what that entails. Uh, what sessions we want to do, uh, how we're going to do it, everything. Uh, and the other thing, and the third aspect would be the question of identity, looking at the project uh, as an identity. And as we know, identities are living things that grow, uh, change, and that is exactly why we need to have the content to show that ev evolution. And so this also requires a lot of, of, lot of thinking uh, from uh, people who are building their proposals, and it requires a lot of detail. Um, and this is crucial, I think, because it bridges the, 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 the impact uh, in proposals with the implementation. Because if you start thinking in detail, you're all, all, you are already thinking about the implementation of, of the project. So this is useful not only to, to emphasize the, the, and to enhance the, the impact of your project, but also it will help you um, building and thinking about your implementation strategy. Uh, so I have uh, two questions here. Um, the first one comes from Alessandra and she asks uh, which softwares can be used to manage the, the social media, like planning the posts in advance or, and manage, manage uh, multiple social media, Alessandra? Okay, in this case I can tell you one that is what we use, that is uh, Hootsuite. Um, if uh, you want to, I can write it in the yeah. in the in the so chat just for. Alshan is going to write the the software yes, in the yes, in the uh, chat. Okay, I think there was a colleague already who who mentioned it. Yeah, but this software uh, here it goes. There is a free version that uh, in for the proposals the proposal of European projects. It's it's uh, it's enough uh, normally. Uh, and you can you can uh, manage the the posts. We use a lot for Twitter because it's uh, more. Uh, we do a lot of uh, of uh, tweets, and it's easier to. For instance, uh, what we do uh, uh, in social networks, uh, we have a deliverable of uh, of a project, and from that deliverable, we we don't have a single document. We have ideas. We have uh, um, parts of the deliverable that can raise the attention of of. Uh, of our target group, so we we take some parts of of the deliverable and we publish them as uh, individual uh, documents. And for that, we do a tweet, uh, and we don't need to say that is deliverable uh, 3.2 blah 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 because in in practice they don't care about the the deliverable; they care about the the content. Yes. So uh, I have, I'm gathering uh, other questions. Um, Alessio, I'm sorry if I'm saying your names completely uh, in, a, in the wrong way. Um, 
he asks uh, uh, in Table 1 of Dissemination Action Plan, uh, there's a difference between primary and secondary target groups. Can you explain a bit what, what that means? Okay, yeah. Uh, um, so, uh, primary target groups are, are, are um, depending on, on the project, uh, the groups that we really want to, to that uh, our, our project uh, creates impact. Um, let's see if I find, uh, if I found, uh, oh, for instance, in Dandelion project, sorry to give always this example, but it's our project. Uh, one primary target are the projects, the projects of Horizon 2020 and FP7. This is our primary target. A secondary target um, are researchers in general, for instance, that, okay, they don't have a project at the moment, but in the future they may have, um, so we consider this as a, as a secondary target group. So it depends on the focus of your, of your project. We can say that uh, media, for instance, as uh, I mentioned, it's always a secondary target because uh, they are not uh, um, someone, they are not an entity that will uh, benefit with our project, but they are uh, uh, a channel to reach uh, the, the real uh, uh, target groups. I hope this uh, clarifies the, the, the question. Um, and then we have Eleonora asking a question of the of for you to give examples on what kind of support uh, your pro the project okay. gives. Okay. Yes. I don't know if the website is uh, is uh, online. I think so. Yes. So in uh, in our website we have a, a list of the um, services that we can uh, give to the to the projects. We are limited in in uh, in the number of projects that we can support, but. Uh, what I did here was a presentation uh, that was not so practical, it was more in theory, but for instance, we want to help the projects uh, on their online marketing strategy and implementation. So going, put the hands in work and, and doing things in terms of online marketing. Also um, support the projects to not only to create the, the social networks because this is easy, but how to uh, manage the social networks in terms of uh, putting them in the ranking of searches, for instance, and reach the, the um, good number of, of, uh, of um, connections. Uh, we also have, uh, um, uh, we, uh, we are in the process of creating social media games where we involve different projects that we can connect each, each, each of these projects in a common game. And this will be a very interesting way to, to promote the projects. So in a way, you are, not, you are not promoting the projects directly, because I think this is the, 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 the secret, is to um, show the projects without being so um, uh, direct in saying this is an European project, uh, we did a proposal, we have five work packages. No, we, we can communicate our project um, without this uh, uh, so um, technical information uh, of, of uh, the project itself. And these social media games will be uh, games coming from the projects uh, that people will learn, especially young people, will learn from from the projects and about the projects, but in a, let's say, immersive environment where they don't know that we are talking about uh, European projects. They will know at the end. Uh, we also, we, we will organize uh, several uh, bar camps. Um, bar camps are, are this uh, also called unconferences uh, that we want to discuss uh, the the, these subjects that are here in a known uh, and informal uh, uh, environment. We have thematic charrettes. The thematic charrettes, uh, uh, it's good to, to, <laughs> to talk about this here because uh, they will be like uh, th this webinar, but with interaction, but in a, in, a, in a physical environment where we want to have projects and researchers and we want to present the guides um, and uh, have 
a feedback from, from these uh, projects and researchers. And at the end, may, maybe the most practical, uh, um, and the most visible uh, help that we can give is create some, uh, some uh, uh, materials, like uh, create a brochure, create a template for documents, create press releases. This we can also do for your, your projects. Of course, probably in most of the cases, it will be for ongoing uh, projects from Horizon 2020. Yeah, uh, we have, of course, one question. Are, are these services for free? <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, because, well, they are not for free because we are, we are you, receiving yes. uh, <laughs> money already from, from the European Commission. Yes, they are for free. So this is a very, I think we, all, we can all agree on, on this. Uh, this, is, this is very useful and we c it is uh, an additional support that we can get even when we are going through uh, uh, the proposal phase already to, to discuss some points with you. Um, I have another question here. It's about uh, the, the relation between the dim dissemination channel and the type of public um, that you mentioned that um, different types of public should be addressed with uh, specific forms of message. And we have a question that asks, is that, does this has to always be the case? And uh, the, the person mentions the, the, the texts and material for classes and university students. So the typical texts and guidebooks, do you think that it, it can be uh, reconcilable with what we are talking about, the, the specific way young people uh, uh, tend to be demanding and everything? Well, when, one of the problems when we try to, to create uh, rules and, and ec ed this, it's that we are always have uh, exceptions, mm -hmm. uh, of course. So these are uh, good practices, examples of, uh, of uh, mm -hmm. what we did and we, what we are doing. But of course, there, there are always uh, uh, exceptions also depending on the project itself and on the, the scope of, of, uh, of the project. Uh, so don't take this as a written in, uh, in stone, but, um, but as examples that what should be done. But of course, and uh, as I said in the plan, everything can be uh, uh, adapted accordingly with the project and wha with what we want to, to communicate. So I don't have a, a, a question right now, pending answer. So if you want to send us more questions, please do so, so that, that we still have plenty of time. Uh, and this is a, a very good opportunity uh, to, to pose a question to, to Alexandra. Um, I, w I would, I, I would uh, in the meantime, when people are still thinking uh, and to feel the, the awkward si silence, <laughs> I, would, I would like to, to, to make a question. And this goes specifically from my role as national contact point, is um, uh, because we deal with a lot of, of projects and we deal with a lot of proposals. And so it's sometimes difficult to, to envision uh, um, exactly the, de the detail uh, of this, this communication plan and how to improve it. Uh, so how do you suggest uh, uh, for us to, to, to engage with the community in terms of, of uh, uh, providing advice to improve their communication plan? What's the key message that we, you would suggest oh. us? I will suggest to start uh, by the proposal itself. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is the first, uh, first thing because uh, um, and the, the European Commission is asking that uh, mm -hmm. more and more that and now they are asking to 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 have a, a draft mm -hmm. dissemination and communication plan and it should start there and you you mentioned before um, it's good for the project but if we want to have proposals approved mm -hmm. it's also good for the evaluation pro process mm -hmm. itself mm -hmm. um, so if we start from the proposal already with this uh, draft of dissemination and communication plan it's a, it's a good start then it will be easier in the first months or second during the two first months of the project mm -hmm. to elaborate more on that uh, plan and have the the concrete and uh, detailed detailed plan for the first year of of, mm -hmm. uh, of the project and the important thing is uh, as i said it was at the end of presentation but it's the monitoring so don't it doesn't make sense to create a dissemination and communication plan for two or three years mm -hmm. because a lot of things happens during that time. So do it uh, 
year per year or even less, but year per year, uh, and try always to evaluate the the what you did, also including feedback from the participants, from mm -hmm. the stakeholders, from who you to whom you communicate. For instance, does it make sense to have a, a, a workshop or a seminar and don't, uh, without collecting uh, the, the feedback from the participants, as we will do <laughs> later on on this yes, webinar? We will. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, but. Um, the, the, this is the, the start, of course, and then a plan could be a very good plan, but it's, we, we need to work on, on, on that. And for that, I, I didn't want to say that directly because uh, it's our job, but I think uh, in, uh, having an organization in the, in the consortium with experience mm -hmm. on, on this, and some, sometimes with that the almost uh, like 90% of the project for them is uh, doing the communication and dissemination could be a, a, a good idea because they know what they are doing. Mm -hmm. They are used to communicate not only European projects, but other, other um, products and services. Mm -hmm. So they uh, have the marketing approach. Let's think on the project as a, a product that needs mm -hmm. to be uh, to have marketing mm -hmm. associated. Okay, so we have uh, some more questions coming coming through. I'm gonna go through them. Okay, so um, Eleonora asks if you can give uh, interesting examples of indicators in social media, uh, in addition to Google Analytics, other than likes for Facebook posts. Or something. <laughs> well, I need to to uh, see my papers, but uh, but um, for instance, in uh, in Twitter, mm -hmm. uh, uh, if uh, if you do uh, uh, if you create a moment that uh, you, I don't know. If all of you know that, but uh, now in Twitter you can can create a moment that, for instance, you are going to an event, and you create a moment for this event, and so all tweets are going to this moment. So, the indicator here is during that action, during let's call it moment, how many uh, uh, followers did you go get, uh, how many likes, how many re re retweets. Um, one important thing, and of course, that will boost these uh, figures is uh, to mention, to hashtag other projects, to hashtag the event itself. Uh, that this will, this will, this means that others will see your post, and uh, um, we will have more followers. Of course, in Twitter, followers are, are the important thing. In Facebook, you have the the likes, uh, and then LinkedIn. Of course, uh, with what we need is members, and I can tell you that it's very, very difficult to have uh, members in uh, in LinkedIn, and we see projects running for two or three years, and we go there, and they have 40, 50 members. That is not uh, enough. But just let me tell you one thing, uh, and I'm sorry about always mentioning the future, but on this uh, guide that we will be available next month, we will have for this for uh, five social networks um, uh, youtube uh, uh, instagram uh, linkedin uh, twitter and facebook we will have uh, all this list of indicators and also some useful statistics of uh, the the prof profile of the people that normally use this uh, these social networks okay thank you um so um and other than this, uh, there is also a question coming from Alexio. He, he, he or she, I'm so sorry, um, asks, uh, uh, what about sensitive projects dealing with sensitive topics like migration, vaccines, uh, especially in what concerns how to communicate these sensitive topics to the general public and the media? It's a it's, uh, Good question because we are doing that for uh, for some projects dealing especially with uh, migration, um, and the, the way that we are doing, uh, we are helping them. It's creating stories around this, starting from uh, the problem, uh, and uh, let me see if I use the right term in English, like uh, personalizing mm -hmm. the the the, um, the the problem. We, we, for instance, we conduct, uh, conducted an interview with a migrant that is now a social entrepreneur. And this is a good way to communicate be because you are putting faces on the, on the, on the problems. Mm -hmm. um, and 
yeah, this is a, uh, for sensitive uh, issues is the best way to, to communicate. Okay. And then uh, um, we have another question uh, regarding the, the, the input from partners to, to the um, Facebook page. And the question here is, what happens when you're alone on the project? Uh, so uh, basically, this means that the, this person's project uh, doesn't appear in news feeds. So how, when you're alone, how do you get things started in terms of ch sharing and uh, disseminating and you know, making your Facebook page visible? Um, when you are alone in the project, it means I'm that guessing it's uh, it's not an Horizon 2020 yeah, project. Uh, it might be a, a, a smaller project or, or something. So basically, if if you don't have a, a group of institutions or partners to rely well, on, well, we can start from our own networks. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, in principle, all organizations, commercial or not, nowadays uh, they have a social network. Mm -hmm. So we can start from from then, from there, not doing a direct. Uh, what we used to do, for instance, is uh, we 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 use our company social networks, but we don't say again. We don't say um, we started a project uh, in. Uh, um, procurement as we did last month no we s we started by saying do you are you interested in uh, procurement uh, are you involved in the tenders or this kind of issues so we j we just started this uh, methodology to create a, a network of consultants mm -hmm. this kind of thing so uh, use the the, f the social networks that we have to boost the, or to give the initial uh, kick off mm -hmm. to the project uh, social networks. Okay. If I s saw something uh, also m in the question more than this is others doing uh, uh, posts uh, in, uh, in the in the projects. Mm -hmm. uh, in this case, uh, you you must have a dissemination uh, and communication leader that must concentrate uh, mm -hmm. everything. Of course. In big projects, you can give access to others to make posts, but before doing the post, you need to, to have mm -hmm. this information mm -hmm. or else you lose uh, control. Mm -hmm. And maybe they are publishing things that are not so, okay. so good. <laughs> to keep your identity on tracks, yes, right? Yes, yes. Okay, then we, we also have a, a question regarding the, the amount of time needed uh, in a project to to start a website or a blog, and this is a, a, a this is directly related with what you mentioned. It's not just about creating the website; yes, it yes. needs to to be updated and have content. Yeah. So yeah, what n normally what we do is, uh, um, and what we advise is to to have uh, just uh, the first uh, splash uh, splash page of the website. It's just a a, a page with a branding in the Mm -hmm. as soon as possible during the first month just to be there without mm -hmm. uh, any information without under construction mm -hmm. don't use under construction mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and then until the month three you should have the the, the website because uh, after that uh, if if it's a 24 months project for instance uh, um, at month three you should have the website um, of course, at that moment, what, to, what you will have uh, almost only insti institutional information, but you can always have uh, events on the on that uh, on the topic that you are working. You can have some news um, and try to animate the the, the website. Uh, also, you can publish not at the same time. You can publish the objectives of your project. If you if you have uh, uh, some uh, um, banners on the website, uh, for instance, if we I, I, yeah, um, then the lion is uh, is online. You can see that uh, this. If I do a refresh here, we change it. It's just a simple thing, but the the um, order of the of the uh, societal challenges appears in a different order. Just to give a, a feel of uh, a feeling Something of uh, dynamic, uh, but this is what you can do at the beginning of, of the project. Then, when you start to have more information, uh, for instance, the deliverables that I, I said before, 
you you need to publish the deliverable it's it's uh, mandatory mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you need to be public but from a deliverable you can extract several articles that can feed the website and mm -hmm. can also feed the, the the blog the blog just makes sense to have it as soon as you have uh, results to 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 communicate before that you don't don't do a blog saying uh, we started the project uh, and uh, after one month you say now we, ha we have one month of project <laughs> these kind of things no the blog is to publish uh, useful information in the with an appearance of uh, an article not uh, a delivery so um and i think that uh oh. We should have started with Roberto's question because I think it echoes a lot of, of doubts that uh, all of us who, who deal with Horizon 2020 f uh, face, which is, <laughs> can you please highlight the difference between communication <laughs> and dissemination? It's because it's a blurred line. Each of, uh, each of us has a different uh, definition. You, always, you also have one, for yes, sure. Yes, for sure. <laughs> for us, we keep it simple. And uh, uh, it's, it's about... Uh, uh, Communication, it's about having uh, uh, an uh, em em uh, emissor, emis uh. Uh, emitter or a source of information, a channel and a, a, a receptor that can then go on the other way. So mm -hmm. it's communicate, it's uh, having a dialogue, it's doing a workshop. This is, this is the example that we use, doing a workshop where you ask for feedback, you ask for uh, uh, contributions from the participants. Dissemination, it's in only in one way. We are, uh, for instance, I have a brochure here, I leave it on the table. This is dissemination because uh, I, will, I don't know who will uh, see it, I don't collect any feedback from the people that will see the brochure. Um, this is uh, uh, dissemination. And we normally, this is the definition that we use. So communication, it, it implies to a dialogue, and dissemination is all only in uh, in one in one way. Mm -hmm. Of course, there, then uh, it's also the the communication uh, that sometimes European Commission uh, d defines as uh, internal communication, mm -hmm. be communication mm -hmm. between the partners of uh, of the. The consortium. Uh, then we have another question regarding how exactly uh, did you decided or approached the other projects, the European projects, to and started working and collaborating with them. Okay, we uh, we did uh, two things. One, we did a um, a call of interest. So mm -hmm. we contacted the, the projects, the coordinators, and presented our services, uh, and uh, we asked. For, from them, if they have the interest to 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 um, use our our services, for others we also selected some projects in uh, on, uh, depending on the subjects that are now more uh, trendy, like mm -hmm. uh, migration, for instance, or democracy mm -hmm. in Europe. So this was the the two ways uh, approach. Okay. And then, uh, of course, um, we have another question regarding the, the interaction with the public. And I think this is a very challenging question because usually uh, we, we are, we are as researchers, uh, uh, quite used to interacting with academia. It's part of, it's part of the job description. Uh, but then interacting with the public, it's not uh, um, always easy to 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 do. We sometimes we struggle how to do it, and so uh, uh, we have a question here asking you to explore a bit more the types of interaction with the public. And give us some examples, for instance. Okay, the the easiest way, but is not the one <laughs> that we prefer, are the social networks, of course. Uh, but this is not so. They are social, but not so not so personal. Uh, but is the easiest way, and the, is a massification of this uh, interaction but uh, the best way and uh, uh, I said that in the events I think are the the bar camps the end conferences mm -hmm. that uh, you can organize uh, uh, this end conference uh, that what means this is a, a conference that is an informal conference mm -hmm. sometimes we even organize this in uh, in um, in uh, bars or some uh, garden or, or uh, and this is the best way to 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 integrate them and to um, to reach them mm -hmm. and of course what we will say to them 
again, we don't want to, to, to uh, for public in general, we don't want to, to, to fill them with uh, scientific uh, information. Uh, uh, we, we want what they want to know is, uh, okay, I'm here with you, we did, you did a project uh, that uh, has impact in my life, I want to know how uh, it impacts in my life, in my, my wife, my uh, uh, children, uh, friends, uh, society in general, I need to know, to mm -hmm. know uh, that. Okay, and then uh, Constantina here uh, um, also questions if we can if we can uh, also distinguish between dissemination and communication depending on the audience. Like dissemination might be relevant uh, uh, is relevant to an o audience, and communication is how uh, you communicate your research to a wider public. For instance, uh, could we see well, it this way or just looking to this question? I, I will say. Uh, I'm thinking that could be uh, uh, the opposite. I know. I, I mean, mm. uh, uh, like uh, dissemination, you do it to to a mass mm -hmm. audience mm -hmm. because uh, it's not possible to have uh, communication if you are in a conference with 200 participants and they all decide to to interact. Mm -hmm. It's not. It's not possible. So this is more dissemination, deliver, delivering something. Um, so I will say that uh, the, the dissemination is more uh, for a, a, a wider uh, audience and communication. It will be uh, for in really interested mm -hmm. uh, uh, participants because they have something to say, they have something to add or even to, to disagree mm -hmm. uh, and this creates a communication, a discussion, a dialogue. Yeah. I would say I would say that the, the way you're d describing um, communication is very very close to to the concept of engagement, engaging mm, yes, with yes, uh, yes. with the other. Because we want to learn something with uh, with them. Mm -hmm. also. Okay. So it's it, that is the the I think that it's it's the difference here in the terms of the concept that you're that you're saying is that the communication is really about engaging with yes, uh, with yes. the audience. Um, so we have another question here re uh, regarding uh, good tips to write a great policy brief. <laughs> it's not just a good one, it's a great one <laughs> that we want. Um, good question. Let's see. We, we, we are writing uh, some policy briefs in this, uh, in this uh, uh, project. Um, we, I don't know if there is a recipe for mm -hmm. a good policy brief. Um, what what we advise is uh, okay to have uh, not more than ten pages of of uh, of uh, policy brief, and then it also the the definition of policy brief itself because uh, some projects we notice that they call policy briefs to some um, uh, outputs of of the project uh, a policy brief the name says a little bit about it policy brief it's something that uh, uh, we wa you want to to um, to direct to 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 policymakers and try to uh, influence them some some somehow. Um, so I will say that, that the policy brief uh, should, besides this uh, broad objective, should try to to um, to to focus on the real impact of, of our project and the impact on the policies. Because we can have a, a, a good output, a good imp expected impact of the project, but we know from the beginning that it will not be possible to, to turn into a, a policy. Mm -hmm. uh, so we need to, to focus on the, what is possible to, mm -hmm. to, to implement. The phys phys feasibility of, yes. of the, of the the recommendations that we are presenting. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we uh, have. Uh, sorry, by the way, we can share also our our policy briefs. They will be ready also at the end of uh, of June. Yeah. Uh, just an interesting thing that we did on this project and could complement this uh, this approach is that uh, for each of the policy briefs, we are also creating what we call the fact sheets. The fact sheet is a, like an executive summary of the policy brief that we can print it in uh, one page uh, and 
leave it uh, at a, an event, a conference, because we know that if we leave a 10 pages document, no one will read it. But at least this policy brief of one page will raise the, the, the attention of, of who, who is reading, and maybe they will also read the, the, the policy brief. And seek for more information, more yes, detailed information. Yes. Good looking, a good looking, a good looking <laughs> fact, sheet. fact sheet. Okay, yes. and uh, we have a, a question regarding the exploitation of results. So, how does this dissemination communication is linked with exploiting the results afterwards? Well, uh, um, if uh, th they are different things, of course. Yes. But um, at the end of the uh, more. Uh, close to the end of the project, we can start thinking on the dissemination and communication uh, related with the exploitation and sustainability of the project. Mm -hmm. We can start creating some uh, um, brochures on uh, this sustainability, trying to, to, to convince uh, uh, our, let's say, potential clients or investors that we have a good uh, um, product service uh, offer. Um, so at, mo at the st third stage of the project, the, the testing and the demonstration, we, we should start thinking already on the, on the exploitation. And maybe it's possible, if possible, it's not easy on, on the SSH, but try to, to link the, the exploitation with a very uh, small business plan mm -hmm. of, uh, of our project. Mm -hmm. It, it certainly depends on, on the actions also. Yes. Um, so we have eight minutes left <laughs> uh, to collect more questions. I, I think I, I've, I've basically covered what we had in the chat room. So um, please, if you have any last minute questions, send it to us. We are almost uh, running out of time here. Um, and uh, in, in the meantime, uh, I would, uh, in, uh, Waiting while we wait for some other questions to to be and before we close, uh, I would just uh, uh, wanted um, Alcentro to, to talk about a bit uh, uh, work that the project is doing, focusing on uh, um, success stories and good cases, good stories of of, of uh, SSH and Challenge Six projects, and this this could be a very interesting material also for us. So could you please okay, yes. talk a so bit about it? Going back a little bit. Uh, we, if we follow the structure of policy brief, mm -hmm. from the policy brief we created the um, um, the fact sheets, and from we in terms of number we are talking about ten fact sheets and uh, ten policy briefs and ten fact sheets, and from this we will create what we call the stories. So the stories are a way of um, we will uh, uh, combine a set of uh, uh, f uh, fact sheets in a single story. When we where we can relate, for instance, uh, um, uh, migration with social entrepreneurship, for instance, or youth unemployment, um, and present these stories uh, in a way that we will highlight the work that is done, being done, or it was done by uh, the European projects. This is the idea to to show that uh, FP7 and Horizon 2020, SSH and IIRS uh, created uh, valo valo val valuable, valuable <laughs> research, valuable results uh, and impact that for some reason m m they didn't reach the, the, the citizens, the policy makers, uh, but they are there, they just need to be, uh, the communication to be uh, increased. Um, and without, uh, again, without uh, uh, stating directly the projects, we are talking about the projects. And uh, at the end of these stories, we will, s we will say something like, do you know that uh, all these results, all these uh, policies or these um, uh, methodologies came from uh, European projects? And these are the, the, the projects and that we, they, they spend some hundreds uh, or thousands of euros, but they, they, they reached some, uh, some objectives and they created the, the impact. Yeah. I think this is, a, this is a very interesting also for, for us to, to spread the word on uh, regarding what, what has been done in this challenge and for by the SSH community and to, to uh, uh, stress the, the, the impact already reached. So we have, uh, I will collect 
the three final questions. Um, so first of all uh, is the question that if uh, Dandelion helps other projects, not just Horizon 2020 projects, if you can help them. And uh, if if we all understood well that people can reach out to Dandelion yes, and yes. ask for, for help. Yes. So the second question, yes, for sure. <laughs> the first question, we need to see it uh, case by case. We have our orientations from the project, mm -hmm. project officer. This is an Horizon 2020 mm -hmm. project, but um, we can an analyze it uh, mm -hmm. case by case, but mm -hmm. I will say that yes. <laughs> okay. So, uh, and then we have, sorry, uh, a lot of things happening in the chat right now, so I'm kind of losing track of the questions. Uh, any specific orientation uh, to academic areas? or uh, some orientations there are valid. And this connects with the, uh, also uh, a mandatory question, which is the do's and don'ts. Like the worst case scenario for a dissemination or communication plan, what we really need to avoid doing. Well, uh, um, what, we, what we really need to avoid, and <laughs> this happens a lot is to have a plan and don't follow and don't follow the the plan because the dissemination plan most of the times is a deliverable mm -hmm. uh, and you create a very good uh, dissemination plan that you present to the european commission mm -hmm. but then you don't uh, follow the <laughs> this dissemination plan in practice this is something that you should not uh, uh, do um, for do's and don'ts. It's a. It's a, uh, also remind me on the guide that you w we have for each of those uh, four target groups: academia, um, um, media, uh, um, citizens, and uh, um, it's missing one. Uh, Sorry, academia. Uh, Academia, Academia policy makers. Yes, it's for this. All, for each of those four target groups, we have all the do's and don'ts when approaching them. Mm -hmm. I, so I don't know by memory all of them, but they will be uh, available on the on the guides. By the way, I, th I think I didn't mention, but uh, the guides, we we will have the printed versions of these guides that. Once they are printed, they are printed, and that's it. But we will have online versions, um, dynamic and interactive online versions that will be updated uh, during the, the, the project, because we always receive uh, new ideas, new insights, things that uh, may be uh, presented in a better way. So do, on this website of the Lion, we will have the interactive version of the, get the guidelines. And finally, the last question today uh, is regarding how can projects be involved in the Dandelion Collaborative pro okay. Portal? Um, yeah, we, we have, uh, um, um, let me show here, we have this um, library. I think uh, uh, this uh, uh, William is, uh, yes. is uh, uh, talking about, uh, about that. So we have the library here sorry um, let me show you it was one thing that uh, i mentioned at the beginning of uh, of the project so we have this uh, um, dandelion ssh ssh research library um, that we also call it uh, the seed library because we have seeds here and the idea is to um, have on this uh, uh, library all the SSH projects represented. This is like a, a catalog of projects, mm -hmm. but also that uh, allows the communication between projects. We can contact directly. This will be recorded, but we can say that this is a better version of Cordis. <laughs> 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 for, but only for <laughs> SSH uh, uh, projects. And um, these are examples, but uh, the idea is you have this project here, and you have uh, the, um, the project. It's from Horizon 2020. You can uh, um, 
um, check the information on this project. And then if you are logged in, because you need to, to log in, you can access to the events of this project, to the news of these projects. You can contact directly the, the coordinator, do likes, this kind of things, as, as a social networks of, uh, of projects. Uh, this is the, the idea of the seed uh, library. Okay, so that was it. We have just reached our limit, uh, limited time. I uh, think I'll show once again. 20 seconds more. <laughs> yes, 20 seconds. We are 10, 20 sec <laughs> seconds behind. I would like to thank, uh, to, to thank, thank Elshander again and all the Dandelion um, project to, to sh for sharing with us uh, s this presentation and some clear ideas and tips uh, f to, that will certainly be very helpful. Uh, I hope that you all enjoyed this, this webinar. We will be uh, uploading the video uh, very shortly, we hope. Uh, and we will also be uploading the presentation for your, if, so that you can disseminate uh, and send it to your contacts or someone that might, be, uh, uh, might find this uh, useful. Uh, I will also s we will also send uh, a brief uh, um, survey to you to assess uh, uh, the, the, this webinar, so please uh, answer to us and give, help us to improve our work. And stay in touch, uh, uh, we are working on more webinars in Net for Society and uh, soon we will give you more news regarding data management plans and open access for SSH. So, Thank you again and leave your comments or send us some uh, messages if you want to. Thank you. Okay, thank you.